Well, good day and welcome back. Uh, video is a little bit late this week. Um, been pretty busy at work, but let's jump right into it. Um, we're going to be talking about variable scope. Now, I said in the last video that we're pretty much at the end of JavaScript, and there's some miscellaneous stuff I wanted to co I want to cover. Um, it turns out that I thought I was going to be able to do it in one video, but it's going to take up in maybe three, four videos. But never mind. Um, it's some other stuff that we're going to see later, so I, I'm still not going to cover things that you're really not going to see, and I'm not going to cover it in too much depth either. So let's talk about variable and scopes. All right. So um, let's take a look and see what's going on here. So I have two pieces of code here, sample code. And the first one, example one, I have, you know, on line one, a variable x, and it's going to set to the value global. And I have a function definition. So I define a variable x. Then I have a function definition. I just define the function. It's not being called yet or anything. If I define the function as you've seen before, I never call it. Nothing is going to happen. And then on line 8 is where the action begins. So uh, line 8, I say print out the current value of x as you know it. And we're going to imagine that JavaScript is somehow going to say, oh, what is the value of x? And it's already been defined to be global. And it's going to print that out. And then it's going to run the function. And in the function, we say x is equals to foo. And we're not sure yet what is going to happen. Is JavaScript going to complain that oh, I don't know what an x is? Or is it going to say, oh, I know that x is already defined up above before this function. Um, and reassign that a new value. And then print that out. Then the function return. And then at the end, we print out what the current value of x is. And we can see from the bottom, if you cheated and <laughs> looked at the bottom, you'll see that oh, it is indeed that what JavaScript did on line 4 was, hey, I'm looking for x to assign a new value to, and there's one already defined in the global above. So we don't really know about global scope yet, so let's don't use that word. It's already defined, and so that's what it does. And because it's assigned, reassigned the value from the one that's defined, hence even after the function exited, um, because it's the one and only x variable um, that's being used in both inside and outside of the function, then there's the same value. But then now let's look at the next piece of code. And here you see something very different. The only thing that changed is on line four, I put the var in front of the x variable. So now I'm saying actually create a new variable x inside of this function. And then you can look at the output and you see that your output is different too. In that before we enter the function, we were able to read the value we set for x on line one. Then we went into the function, we create a new variable x and we were able to set a value, print that out. But once we left that function, that variable that, we, that variable we created inside the function went away. And so we're back now to the variable that we had before. And so I kind of wanted to do this uh, to kind of get your mind thinking about what it might be happening in the function there, that it's able to somehow hide the previous x or um, x variable and allow you to create new ones. Okay. And so let's talk about that in a little bit more detail and some more examples. All right, surprise, surprise. We're gonna be talking about variable scopes. And there's this idea of a global scope, and what I'm gonna say is non-global scope. I'm just make it very simple. Is that something is global or it's not global? And then we eventually talk about executing the environment. And the only reason that, or context, and the reason that's gonna become important is because it's gonna dictate what kind of objects you have in your available or global variables you, you, you have available to you, depending on where you're running. So what is a scope? Think of it. Let's say I give you a project and I say, hey, I want you to build me a deck. And you can say, well, um, how big is this deck? How complex, right? And so you're trying to understand the scope of the work. Because if I say build me a deck and give me a price and I don't set parameters of how much money I want to spend, how big I want my deck and so on, then both of us might be in for a surprise. You might charge me too much or I might end up with a deck that I don't want, okay? So um, this is what a scope is. The scope is just saying when a variable is basically valid. And to know when it's valid is to say when it's being accessed, has it been defined or is it available in the scope? And so scope acts like a logical home for a variable. So each variable belongs to some scope and scope can nest. And we started before because we had the global scope um, before. Uh, you didn't know there was a global scope. But we define that variable x, it belongs to the global, global scope. You always have the global scope. It's, it's where all your code and all your objects exist. And then when you saw we created the function, 
it introduced in example two, it introduced its own scope once we said variable x that now was created in the function scope for foo. And so now we had this function scope, the, the scope for foo nested inside of the global scope. And you could keep nesting further and further. Okay. And if you want more details on um, this whole variable scope thing and global and so on, and all the other one in ver um, hoisting, variable hoisting, uh, I don't want to scare you. If you want to read more about it, there's a link. If not, don't worry about it. Over time, you'll just pick it up. So I don't want to scare you, but I do. I don't want to make this video too long. We can just talk about it forever when there's some really, really good material. And I honestly think you're going to retain a lot more if you just kind of spend a few minutes reading that. Okay. But let's continue. As I was saying before, the global scope is always present and it contains variables, objects, and properties provided by the environment in which you run it. So what is an environment? Now, if you remember back, and this is a oh, slide from before, what I'm showing here is when we first introduced JavaScript, we said that though, if you imagine in the browser where JavaScript was originally designed for, um, it was running in the browser, and then later on people say, hey, I could pull out this core part, the engine, Java engine, let's call it, that's doing all the executing of the Java code, and wrap an application around it, a desktop application, and run it on the desktop. And that's where the Node.js application is. And so Node.js and your browser share the JavaScript engine, but then they have different parts wrapped around it. So your environment is simply, where is my JavaScript running? Because if your JavaScript is running in browser, you can expect that you have access to certain type of global variables that are different than when it's running on the desktop. And we can just kind of guess, you know, in the browser, you have the documents and other things and window and on the desktop application, you don't have those things. Okay. And this is exactly what we can see here. We're looking at some global variables that are available to you in the different environments. And so in your web browser, you have the console variable, which we've been using a lot forever. You have the document variable, which we're not going to get into details about, but it just represents the document itself. Um, that you know it's being represented in the U, uh, browser UI, and then there's the window, which represents the browser window itself. It means you can do things like back forward. When you click back forward on your browser or load a certain URL, that's the window. In Node.js, you also have the console variable. And you can still lock things, but you have you know the directory, the current directory that this code is running in, uh, whatever your JavaScript, um, the file name that's running, and this thing called modules, which we're not going to really touch, but we're going to see a lot of. We will talk to it about it when we get there. So hopefully that kind of sets it up about what global variables are and how it, why knowing where your variable, your JavaScript is running is important because that dictates what kind of variables you have access to. So let's go look at some example of this. So the examples we have here, we have three examples to look at. And so we're going to start out by looking at some HTML code. And then um, at some JavaScript that we're going to run in Node.js. So the HTML code is pretty simple. Um, there's no HTML really in it other than the tags that are required. But the reason I have this is because I want to run um, this Java, particular JavaScript code in the browser. And I don't want to worry about an external file and referencing an external file. So I kept it simple. So I embed some JavaScript here. And you can see I have the console variable. And again, for, Java, for the JavaScript that's loaded on, in your browser, it's going to put it in the browser environment. And so it creates or provides the console variable document and window like we talked about. And I'm going to run it by opening it in my web browser here. And then I'm going to, um, so you can see the last statement there, the window that alert um, ran. And so it popped up an alert for me. But we're... Uh, is the output from my console statement. So I um, mentioned this before, I'm going to go to my tools menu in there for Firefox and do web console. Your browser is going to be diff different. And I showed this earlier in our, when we started talking about JavaScript, oh, you find the same console output for the different browsers. And you can see there's my output and document that base URL, there it is, and the window variable. But if I resize my browser window and just refresh, of course, you're going to rerun all the code and I see the alert. But notice at the bottom, you can see that how um, the size has changed also, um, which makes sense, right? All right. So that's about it for that. Now, what if I copy this code and I take it and I put it in a file um, and put it here in example for the JS. And I'm going to try and run it um, in Node. 
or we think is going to happen? Well, we already set it out in Node. We shouldn't expect to have a document or a window. So when we try to run this in Node, um, we're going to get some errors. And that they will see um, notice complaining that I don't know what a document is. And even if we were to you know, say, well, let's comment out um, the line, line two here with document, and we're going to run it again, you know, it still doesn't know what a window is because a window is not an appropriate um, thing for your JavaScript. Um, but there's some other code that um, with here with um, the variables that Node does provide you in the um, global environment. And I suggest that you take a run it and see what you get on your platform or on your environment. So finally, um, what is non-global? So we just talked we talk about global scope. So what is non-global scope? Well, it's everything that is not global, right? And for example, when we had the function foo, we created a variable var, and that variable was not in the global scope. It was inside of um, the scope created by that function foo. And we saw from before very early on that functions in JavaScript are very first class, which means you can pass a function around like a va any other value and so on. And in JavaScript, it's used to define classes. And we didn't really talk about that in detail, and we're going to see some of that later on. But here's an example I want to leave you with, and a test at the same time. I have here a function foo, which is pretty much the same thing I had before. But what I added to it was on line 7, another function goo. So I define a function within a function, which since JavaScript functions are first classes, and you can do things like that. Not every language allows you to do nested functions. And then I call it. And I want you to think about the code, just look at it, and write in the answer, if you will, on line 21 to 24, or what you think is going to be printed in there. And so that's going to test your knowledge of if you understand this. If not, just run the code and see the result. It's all provided in the repo. All right. Again, thanks. I'm going to try and keep this short. It's already about close to 12 minutes. And um, take care. See you in the next video.